Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart. Welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Tuesday, December 26th, 2023. And as always, we're going to look at the top stories of the day that have something to do with what the Bible has to say about what our world will be like at the time of the end. And the time of the end is the time that God's kingdom comes to earth. There's a number of events that will take place, a seven-year period called the 70th week of Daniel, the time of Jacob's trouble, where uh, events will take place which will culminate in the second coming of Jesus Christ to the earth. And what we do here, we mention uh, how the stage is being set miraculously uh, with the events that are taking place in the world right now. We appreciate you uh, signing on to us and watching. Uh, we hope you had a nice Christmas. Thank you so much for these wonderful Christmas wishes. So many of you wrote uh, nice things in our comment section on our YouTube page. It, uh, let me tell you, it's much appreciated. I do want to thank every one of you who prays for us, those of you who f support us too. Um, I can't get to everyone and write a note or uh, say anything except thank you, thank you, thank you. It means everything to us and uh, onward we go. Now, again, if you're new to this, we have an app uh, on our founded both app stores, Android and Apple, Educating Our World with Don Stewart. Everything we have here, plus more, our whole website, 65 books and PDF form on 11 different topics, including 12 on Bible prophecy. It's all there for free download. You can download it from the app. You can download it from the website. Plus, uh, the different videos we do, you can, they're downloadable too, our breaking news. We have them archived there uh, on the website and on the app. We don't archive them on YouTube. We only keep them around for a few days. But anyway, they're there if you want to watch them. And we try and keep these under 15 minutes. So just, you know. Now, one other thing too, because we've got a ton of new people that have come on. You'll never hear this program emphasize that the end must come soon. Please hear me out. It could happen at any time, but it does not have to happen soon. The coming is in God's timing, and we've got to be very careful trying to put some time limit on the Lord's coming. I've been a believer now for 53 years, and from day one, I've heard people say the Lord is coming immediately. He's coming soon. The, time, the signs are there. And again, the signs are there. I've written a book called 25 Signs. We're near the end. But the signs are setting the stage for the coming of Christ. It's going to happen in his timing. Please understand that. And until then, we're to occupy, we're to do business, uh, as the Bible says, as Jesus told us to do, before the coming of the Lord, to do the work of the ministry. So please, let's uh, keep our eyes on that. And what we do here is we go through every day and uh, talk about what's going on. We're not going to give you any histrionic uh, stories saying that, you know, we've got two months or three months or something like that. We don't know that. But what we do know is God's kingdom's coming to earth and we are very excited about it. And it's a great time to be alive. All right. We're on day 81 of the war in Gaza and Israel is facing a ton of problems. And this includes a number of unrealistic expectations. As we get into the 2024, we'll be talking about these over and over again and some of the things we need to keep our eyes on, and we'll touch upon them. But each one of the stories we're going to talk about today, each one of these headlines is going to add to the complications for Israel. Here are their immediate problems in day 81. All right, update number one, Benjamin Netanyahu visits Gaza, and he says it's going to be a long battle. We're not close to the end. He tells uh, the, he tells the Likud reports, that's from his own party, that Israel is winding down the war against Hamas or wrong. It's going to be a long, drawn-out battle. Now, this is not going well with the Israeli public. There's a number of problems we are seeing right now, and they're going to get worse. For one thing, the death toll of the Israeli Defense Force is rising. Over the weekend, something like 14 soldiers uh, these 14 young men died in battle in Gaza, and their pictures are always placed on the Israeli websites, and their families are in mourning. One reporter said this has been the toughest time of his life because he has to go to these funerals every single day and report on the heartbreaking stories of these young people dying, uh, you know, going into Gaza. And there's articles now coming out slowly but surely from Israel questioning the long-term plan, so we'll keep an eye on that. Not only the death problem, the cost of the war on the lives and on the economy. People are away from their jobs, away from work. Um, 
again, the soldiers are fighting. Tourism, their main industry is shot. There's no tourism there. Uh, the expense for the weapons is enormous. Uh, the enemy has been discovered to be a lot more tougher than thought. And so the expense and the time it takes to, to rid them, uh, and they're doing it. They're doing a fabulous job. But remember, unfortunately, they've had years and years to build these 500 kilometers, 300 miles of terror tunnels, and they're very sophisticated underneath, you know, the Gaza city, Gaza city. And so it's it's very difficult for Israel. And of course, there's infighting now. We're starting to see that among the Israelis, particularly the politicians, the war fatigue, the blame game, because what's happened for years is typical. Politicians just kicked the can down the road. They knew that, yeah, they knew that Gaza, uh, they had all these terror tunnels. They knew they were building all these weapons. They knew they were putting together a plan to attack Israel sometime, but they didn't really do anything about it. They let them do it. And, um, Consequently, we see a lot of anti-Benjamin Netanyahu rhetoric because Netanyahu was prime minister for most of this time, and he should, you know, he talked tough, but he didn't really act tough. And we talked about this before. It was it got so uh, boring and so repetitive. Uh, there would be rockets coming into uh, Israel's border, Sidorot there, right in their the border between them and Gaza. And, uh, you know, people would get injured, sometimes someone killed. So Israel would go and bomb all these empty buildings, warn the people ahead of time, said, no, no, just be careful next time. If you do this again, you're really going to get attacked by us. And they said it time after time after time. They didn't do anything. And now that's why we're in the mess that we're in. Now, we also got the problem of world opinion. College students in America, we did a recent story, actually favor Hamas. They think Hamas should be taking over uh, the Holy Land, not Israel. And the longer it goes, the tougher is the support going to be for Israel. We've got demonstrations yesterday at Christmas time. I could, I could spend the whole program talking about those worldwide demonstrations against Christmas because Christians are seen as being, you know, we're being, we're helpful, we're collaborators, I guess, with Israel in this, the Western civilization, and it needs to be overturned. And so the, the poor people, you know, of Gaza, uh, they're the victims of uh, Israel's mean attacks against them, and we're hearing that over and over again. Not only that, we've got collateral damage, uh, shipping lanes in the Red Sea, Iran. One of the stories that we're going to deal with in a minute, Iran is threatened to attack and stop the shipping in the Red Sea, where about 10% of the world's goods come from, and so economic fallout too. So to summarize, Israel will continue to be made to look like the bad guy. They always have been, but continue now uh, like never before. Sooner or later, the intense fighting has to stop. And the results will not make people happy. Uh, those who have been murdered on October 7th are, will not be totally avenged. The soldiers will have had said to have died in vain because uh, the fighting will not be ever will be over. The intense fighting may be, but you're going to have pockets of resistance, pockets of fighting, and it's not going to end very pretty. Which brings us to our second update. We finally hear from Sinwar, the um, Hamas a terrorist leader there who's in Gaza hiding somewhere. In his first public message since October 7th, he said Hamas won't surrender. Now, the terror chief inflates the group's achievements, falsely claims it is crushing the IDF, which is not they are getting crushed. As top leadership in Qatar, and here's one of the stories, top leadership in the country of Qatar, evaluates an Egyptian proposal to do what? To end the hostilities. And we're going to have more and more of those proposals. In his first public message since the massacres of October 7th, uh, Hamas leader in Gaza, Yaha Sinwar, on Monday remained defiant while grossly inflating the group's terror achievements in the war. He said Hamas is facing a fierce and violent and unprecedented battle against Israel. He acknowledged in a message to Hamas's political leadership this, but he also claimed the terror group was on its way to crushing the Israeli defense forces and referring to Israel, he said Hamas will not submit to the occupation's conditions. In other words, we are not going to surrender. Finally, somebody is calling upon, well, how about asking Hamas to lay down their weapons instead of Israel to stop doing what they're doing? But Hamas refuses to surrender. Now, therein lies the problem. But this brings us to our next problem. Again, Prime Minister Netanyahu. In a Wall Street Journal op-ed, he said Hamas must be destroyed, Gaza must be demilitarized, and Palestinian society must be de-radicalized. Well, first of all, Hamas is never going to be completely destroyed. You might demilitarize Gaza to a degree, but not to the degree that you would like, and Palestinian society will never be de-radicalized. So he's, he's, he's 
These are not these things are not going to happen. Again, unrealistic expectations. The attitude against Israel will never die uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, uh, from day one, as soon as they can listen, as soon as they can hear, as soon as they can understand the children in Gaza, Palestinian children there in Gaza and Ramallah and around the world are told to hate Israel, that Israel's you know, are pigs, they're monkeys, descendants of monkeys. They've come uh, to take our land from us. They're evil and they must be eradicated. And plus, there's something deeper going on here, as we've talked about. The Bible tells it's a spiritual battle, because as we look at the scripture from day one, God's people have always been the object of attempt of attacks, right? Attempted destruction. We have five different countries, people groups in the Old Testament, the Philistines, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the uh, Amalekites, and the Ammonites that attempted to destroy Israel. And all of them do not exist. None of them exist any longer. Their judgment was pronounced against them because uh, God said, I'm going to bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse. But this attitude will will and continue to last until the Lord Jesus comes back. Uh, there's going to be a continual search for peace, but again, there will be no peace until the Lord Jesus comes. Now, there's going to be a pseudo-peace that will come upon the world before that from the final Antichrist. That's why we talk about him, and we'll be talking a lot more about that in the coming year. Somebody was saying, why do you talk about Antichrist? Why just not talk about Jesus Christ? Well, Jesus Christ is our theme, but you realize, apart from Jesus Christ, the second most talked about character in the Bible is Antichrist, about his exploit, what he's going to do, where he's going to bring the world at the time of the end. And so that's why we talk about that too, but we always put it in perspective. Now, again, Iran. Iran threatens Israel over killing of a senior revolutionary guard officer. It vows revenge. It says Tel Aviv should count down. And so we've got Iran now saber rattling because Israel was able to knock off one of their senior officers of revolutionary guard. And we have another story. Iran now threatens to close the Mediterranean Sea. Why? They're alleging the U.S. has been partaking, uh, participating in these crimes in Gaza. So the Mediterranean Sea could be closed indefinitely by Iran if the U.S. and Israel continue their crimes in Gaza, the Iranian state media reported on Saturday. According to Reuters, no exact disclosure was made of exactly how they plan to do it, but they, they claim they're going to seal off this expansive waterway, which uh, carries about, like we said, 10% of the world's goods. And so we'll see what happens there. So the aggressive assault on international trade is leading some shipping companies, as we've mentioned, to switch routes, as has been reported. So here's where we're at. We're exactly what we should expect to see if the Bible is true. What do we see? We see wars, rumors of war, Israel's continual search for peace, but finding opposition on all fronts, Israel's miraculously back in the land in the last days, as the Bible said, Jerusalem's united, as the Bible predicted, and they're in the world spotlight, as the scripture predicts, part of our 25 signs. All of these are being fulfilled, but they're still in unbelief about Jesus. And sadly, the toughest times are still ahead, but also the greatest blessing is still ahead when they finally, as a nation, realize that the one they crucified, the one they pierced, is the one they actually ha had been looking for and should have accepted as the Messiah. Sad thing is, Jesus said, I've come in the name of my Father. You have not received me. Another will come in his own name. Him you will receive. And that's what's coming for Israel in their future. So you've got the best and the worst still to come. And God willing, we'll be here every day to report what's going on and give you the latest and explain how it fits in last day's Bible prophecy. But the good news is it's all coming together or the goal that the Bible talks about, and that is God's kingdom coming to earth in the presence of the king. So it's a great time to be alive, and we are here not by chance. We're here for such a time as this. All right, I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. Until next time, may the Lord richly, richly bless.